So this past weekend, Prometheus had a strong debut at the box office, particularly for an R-rated pick, putting Hollywood on cloud nine. And as they congratulated themselves, they noted how it was not just Ridley Scott's name in the Alien franchise that had enticed audiences to buy a ticket, but also screenwriter Damon Lindelof. Say what? Excuse me, but this guy is the worst screenwriter to hit Hollywood since Akiva Goldsman. And fascinatingly, both men have managed to pull the ink over the studio's eyes. Am I the only one to realize these screenwriters have no clothes? Let's start out with a quick recap of Akiva Goldsman's incredulous success. The scripter broke onto the scene with The Client, a solid legal thriller based on the John Grisham novel. Pleased with his work, Warner Brothers put him on their Batman franchise, where Goldsman wrote both Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. I know, right? How did those two movies alone not kill his career? I mean, he did okay with another Grisham adaptation at the same time, but then he went on to write Lost in Space and Practical Magic, movies that were not only widely disliked by both audiences and critics, but also bombed at the box office. And that should have been the end of Goldsman if it weren't for Ron Howard and Brian Grazer. Somehow Goldsman managed to talk the duo into letting him script A Beautiful Mind, which ended up being a good idea as it led to an Oscar win for the screenwriter. Had Goldsman finally become a great screenwriter? Nope. He lived up to his name as the franchise killer with the Da Vinci Code movies, taking what should have been a slam dunk and instead getting nothing but air. Now to be fair, Goldsman did script and produce I Am Legend, a film that wasn't hugely praised but did quite well at the box office. And he's found redemption on the small screen, so to speak, writing, directing, and serving as a consulting producer on Fox's cult hit Fringe. You know, the show that was supposed to fill the shoes of Lost, co-created and written by Lindelof, aka the new Akiva Goldsman. Now, no matter what one might think of Lindelof's writing, there is no denying that Lost made for some iconic television. And while it was never one of TV's highest rated shows, it had an impressive cult following and a major impact on popular culture. Yet only one real problem plagued Lost, bad writing. The rumor is that when the show started, the creators did not have a definite plan, but instead threw a bunch of crazy stuff into the mix to see what worked and what didn't. What resulted was a number of interesting questions that seemed to have answers, but of course didn't, something audiences realized when the show finally came to an end. In fact, many viewers like myself stopped watching in the final season as the show's story logic seemed to go completely off the rails. Yet Hollywood couldn't resist the idea of plastering from the writer of Lost on their movie posters. Plus, hey, since the show wasn't widely watched, mainstream audiences had only heard the buzz and not personally experienced the disappointment of the final season. Therefore, Lindelof got his first film gig, Cowboys and Aliens. It was horrible. The film was a huge box office disappointment, with many people noting that the script was particularly bad. So why would audiences be excited for him to script Prometheus? It seems he could still count on that lost street cred, or at least convince Hollywood that he could. Yet the biggest complaint about Prometheus is the script. Full of plot holes and unanswered questions, a lot like Lost, it's looking like everyone else on the flick did their job, only to be let down by Lindelof. Yet also last week, it was announced that Paramount has hired him to rewrite World War Z. You know, that Brad Pitt movie that was supposed to be in the can? Well, it turns out it's so bad that the release date has been pushed back from December this year to June 2013 to give time for seven weeks of reshoots. Holy crap! Apparently Paramount is actually going to remake the movie, just like they're doing with G.I. Joe Retaliation, which has also been pushed back to 2013. Now that flick was written by the guys who scripted Zombieland, which had a very smart script, but word is this sequel is testing even worse than the original G.I. Joe. How is that possible? The first G.I. Joe is one of the worst movies ever made. All of this points to the continued lack of respect for screenwriting in Hollywood. Last week on Movie Math, some of you asked how on earth Men in Black 3 could cost $300 million to make. Well, it's because the script had to be rewritten as they were filming, causing huge delays and overtime. But instead of hiring quality screenwriters in the first place, for some reason Hollywood thinks they can just throw more money at the problem. No wonder television is doing so well as shows like Mad Men, Game of Thrones, and Justified sport some of the best writing in a while on any size screen. It's really got to boil down to not just a lack of respect for screenwriting, though, but for audiences. Studio execs apparently think we don't care about story, but instead are easily distracted by sparkly special effects. And with Prometheus' strong debut, indeed many execs will feel their right to think that. Yet if they pay close attention to Prometheus' disturbing 24% drop from Friday to Saturday, or Snow White and the Huntsman's 60% drop in its second weekend, or hell, all of May Sands the Avengers, well, those numbers tell a different story. And while Paramount might be trying to fix G.I. Joe retaliation in World War Z, how will those movies ever recoup their now double budgets? Ticket prices just went up, you know. Is that to pay for mistakes? What do you think? Have you noticed a dip in the quality of screenwriting lately? And will you still be interested in G.I. Joe retaliation in World War Z one year later? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.